The government is scrambling after National Assembly Speaker Nosiviwe Mapisangakula's home was raided a few days ago on new fresh allegations that she received a 2.3 million rand bribe in exchange for defense contracts when she was the Minister of Defense and War or Military Veterans. Which means you're probably already thinking, we are Luta 99. Get into that later. And I need to tell you an absolutely insane story of one of South Africa's most significant whistleblowers who has been whistleblowing on dodgy deals, who was removed from his job after an incident involving him getting arrested for allegedly stealing an air fryer. Imagine losing your career to an air fryer. I've never seen a story like this. It is insane. This is The Issue with Dan Corder. South Africa is a movie. Welcome to the watch party. A few things you should know before we get started. Firstly, all of our episodes exist here on YouTube and in longer, deeper, fuller analyses across on the podcast streamers. Go check them out. Secondly, we have a Patreon where once a week you can get an exclusive expert interview with somebody who really knows their stuff about a big thing facing South Africa. Finally, pop us a like and a subscribe if you like anything about what I've just said or what I'm going to say. It really helps us keep the lights on. Let's talk about Nosi Viwe Mapisa Nakula. The home of National Assembly Speaker Nosi Viva Mapisa Nakula was raided on Monday after serious allegations against her of getting a 2.3 million rand bribe from a company called Umkombe Marine, which is a company responsible for transporting the South African National Defense Forces cargo for military missions. Oh yeah, this is serious. Now I know you're thinking, ah, but Dan, what does our Defense Force even do? Aren't they only kept around so that the government can register them as unemployed people to keep the unemployment stats down? And I get it. I hear you. Like, I don't even know what the SANDF does at all. Like, we've got no natural enemies. No one is interested in invading South Africa. They can't even keep us safe from the hardy dies. Cater deployment. I mean, presumably they're fit and in shape. Why can't they be helping out in communities, doing maintenance projects, helping out with security and, and public hygiene and, you know, the stuff we need. Mapisa Nakula says that she's totally chilled with the raid because she has nothing to hide. But then only a few days later, she didn't rock up for work and they had a stand in some guy named Frolic and there was no explanation provided. Doesn't sound like you have nothing to hide to me, NMQ which I guess can also stand for no more questions. And yes, I know those aren't actually the letters of her names because Nakula starts with an N, but NNQ would have just been so perfect. But this isn't even the first time that Nosibua has been accused of taking a bribe while defense minister. In fact, when she was sworn in as National Assembly Speaker by Cyril Ramaphosa in 2021, she was at that time under investigation for another alleged 5 million rand bribe that she received. The president literally, while Nosibu was under investigation, made her National Assembly Speaker. An incredibly important role where you get to govern and guide what politicians talk about in the functionings of government. That investigation was championed by UDM leader Bantu Holomisa a man who truly has not been the same since he tried to teach South Africa how to fish. You give a poor man a fish and you feed him for a day. You teach him to, f to fish. You give him, you give him, and uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, I don't know how you recover from that. And the worst part is he like blamed the teleprompter and maybe there wasn't a teleprompter. Maybe he was just pretending there was a teleprompter to save his own, his own reputation. But if anything, pretending there's a teleprompter just makes it worse because you really mean to tell me you needed a teleprompter to tell us about teaching a man to fish? These allegations on 2021 are mad though. In addition to allegedly receiving a 5 million rand bribe from a defense contractor, Nosebiwa Mapisa Nakula also allegedly blew 7 million rand on aircraft charters and living it up at luxury hotels across the world. Nosebiwa is truly the Michael Jordan of disappearing for a while, treating herself on other people's money. Truly the Kate Middleton of modern South Africa. No one does it better. In fact, I'm sure when Kate was thinking, who can I go to to ask for advice on how to disappear for a while on somebody else's money? There is nobody better in the world. 
In November 2019, Nusibiwe Middleton allegedly stayed at a hotel attached to the iconic Arc de Triomphe in Paris for an alleged 200,000 rand total for six days, as well as a transport bill, local transport, of 150,000 rand. But that's not even the most insane story, because hardcore fans of Nusibiwe will remember she smuggled her now late son's girlfriend into South Africa. Yeah, it seems like Nusibiwe's son was romantically involved with a woman from Burundi and she smuggled the woman into South Africa on an Air Force jet after this woman was turned down from an SAA flight for having a fraudulent passport, Nosibiwe smuggled her into South Africa and sources at the time said that the couple had plans to marry. Now, Nosibiwe claims that Michelle was being abused by her father and that's how Nosibiwe justified her behavior. But the father then came out and said, no, this is malicious manipulation from Nosibiwe and her sister, who was also involved, because the father had business dealings with them that had gone sour. And this was their response. And since then, even though this has been known, Nusaviva Mampisa Ngakula has continued to rise in the ANC and ended up becoming National Assembly Speaker under Cyril Ramaphosa's administration. It is absolutely insane. And now we wait to see if this will finally be the allegation that catches her out once and for all. But in the meantime, you know what we got to do. There's a brand new corruption scandal. And so welcome back to South Africa's favorite corruption game show, Uya Luta 99. <laughs> Aluta continua to you and a special Aluta continua to all of the alleged looters waiting with bated breath to see if their name gets called out and they get to come onto the stage and make their dreams come true by joining our alleged corruption leaderboard to be crowned one of the best looters in South Africa on Uya Luta 99. She is one of the OGs, one of the best in the business. She's been doing it for the longest time. And with the recent raid of her house by the ID, she can now boast some even more impressive numbers because this contestant has not one, but two outstanding <laughs> allegations of two separate bribes and looting. Please give it up for current National Assembly Speaker and former Minister of Defense no CPUM but he's a Kakula who makes the top three squeezing in above Terry Petal with a phenomenal 5 million plus 2.3 million makes 7.3 million rand. <laughs> We need a better board. Congratulations, those of you where the hollowing out of the SANDF is going really well. Thanks to you. And now I need to tell you about how an air fryer seems to have taken out one of South Africa's most prominent whistleblowers, or how an air fryer was co-opted by insidious behind the scenes forces to take out a whistleblower, depending on who you believe. Here's the situation. Brigadier Dennis Chili works, well, worked. In crime intelligence, one of the most important, powerful, and honestly scary parts of the, of the South African security services. And he seems to be a pretty good dude. He came to prominence in 2017, around the time that the ANC was having their absolutely pivotal, era-defining moment when Cyril Ramaphosa narrowly beat Okosa Zana Dlamini Zuma to become leader of the African National Congress. This was at the very end of state capture. Jacob Zuma was rapidly losing power and Brigadier Chile scuppered a dubious 45 million rand procurement splurge that was designed to take all of this money, this 45 million rand, to bankroll votes at the 2017 ANC elective conference. It was money that was earmarked to buy votes, to pay people off, even though that's not what the procurement originally had designated the money for. Brigadier Chile was involved in flagging that and stopping it from happening. And since then, Brigadier Chile has reported suspicious activity of really powerful people like Police Minister Becky Taylor and successive heads of crime intelligence. And literally his latest reporting was about current crime intelligence boss, Dumisani Kumalo, who Brigadier Chile claims was given security clearance way too fast, impossibly fast for proper process to have been followed because Kumalo got his security clearance in just days before he got appointed when usually vetting people to get such a powerful position in crime intelligence in South Africa's security forces takes months. 
Now, if you're wondering how this could have happened, well, we don't know, but sources have told media outlets that Dumisani Komalo is an extremely close ally of Police Minister Becky Trele. And crime intelligence is so important, and I said scary earlier, because crime intelligence is allowed to do things off of the record for the good of the country. And so a lot of the allegations about state capture center on what people in crime intelligence did to aid and abet the looting of South Africa for all of those years. So in the face of that, in the lion's den, in crime intelligence, Dennis Chile, Brigadier Chile, has been working and has been reporting on suspicious activity. Very bravely, I'll be honest with you, because we're all scared of the police. You definitely don't want to make personal enemies of the people who control the police. So what the hell happened with this air fryer? I always say South Africa is a movie. You could take the greatest script writers in Hollywood. They could not write the kinds of things that come out of South Africa. We said it about Matthew Lani. We said it about Tabo Besta. And now I'm going to say it about this air fryer. Here is what apparently happened. It seems like Dennis Chili the one day needed to buy some groceries. So he went to his local checkers. So Dennis Chili walked in his, and filled up his basket with groceries, expecting to buy the groceries in cash. Then he saw an air fryer beautiful air fryer. So Chile decides to buy it and he thinks to himself, okay, the air fryer is on sale for 800 bucks. I've got about 800 bucks. It's an impulse buy. So what I'll do is I'll buy the air fryer for 800 bucks because I want to get rid of my cash and then I'll pay for the groceries with my card. So he says that he did that. And then he goes to security and security checks his slip and they see Dennis on your slip printout that you've got. It doesn't say the air fryer. Dennis says, no, 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 no misunderstanding let's go talk to the cashier cashier says what are you talking about dennis cashier says to the security guard he told me that he bought that air fryer at another store today and was just carrying it dennis says what the hell you took my 800 bucks you pocketed it and he even claims that that the 800 rand was on the cashier's person so they are both held for further questioning and then it gets really really weird according to dennis his claim about what happened was totally ignored and he was held but the cashier's claim was totally accepted just offhand and she was allowed to leave and you know you might be thinking let's just check the security footage guess what there's no security footage. So now Dennis Chili, Brigadier Chili, stands accused of stealing the air fryer. Petty theft. Like he has been charged. And for just that, he's been fired by crime intelligence. Fired over allegation, a charge of petty theft of an air fryer. He loses his job. And this is where it gets really dark because Dennis claims he's been told by sources that the second that he and the cashier were held for questioning, somehow senior crime intelligence officials were notified and they rushed down to Bedford View Police Station to help in the investigation. Senior crime intelligence, spies fighting spies about national security threats of great interest to the whole nation on a case of alleged petty thievery, went down to the police station to help out the policemen? So if Dennis is right about that, did they go down to meddle with the police just enough to get the cashier released? And the cashier now has disappeared. We don't know where the cashier is. Checkers doesn't know where the cashier is. To just solve that for them so that Dennis Chili would be stitched up in his version of events for stealing this air fryer, which would give them the excuse to fire him. But this is where we need to think quite clearly about this because obviously, yes, there are people who don't want whistleblowers to blow their whistles. Dennis Chili has obviously made some enemies. All whistleblowers are like, you know, tried to be silenced in different ways. And maybe, yeah, maybe the senior officials did have, you know, words in different places and eyes in different spaces and knew once this had happened, they could come down the middle and fix it. But like, I mean, that's incredibly opportunistic. If they were genuinely trying to take him out, wouldn't they have come up with a plan that they were in control of? I'm not a spy, I've never been in crime intelligence, but you would think that they would come up with a foolproof plan start to finish rather than relying on randomness and chance of Dennis Chili really wanting an air fryer and having just the right amount of cash and screwing it up and then a cashier and then no security footage and all of this. Surely that couldn't have been concocted, right? Surely that did just happen? And with Dennis, it's like, yes, there is no video footage, hella sus. 
and there is no cashier around, hella sus, but we have to take his word for it on the 800 Rand uh, that was on his person that he allegedly paid someone that he couldn't then prove later that he had. We have to take his word for it that senior officials came down and meddled. We don't have evidence of that either. Like, I just don't know what to believe here because I like I am with him. Like he should not be in this situation where he's losing a job over allegations of stealing an air fryer and all of the evidence about uh, all of the lack of evidence is dodged. But Dennis Chili's story is not very watertight either. Nonetheless, absolutely crazy. Movie writers eat your hearts out. No matter how hard you work, you will never be able to create something as crazy, something as beyond the realms of what, of imagination, as just South Africa. Just the thing that we make every day <laughs> as a country, for better or worse. All right, so that's our show. Happy Human Rights Day. I hope that you have at least a bit of a weekend. Maybe you've made yourself a long weekend. We'll see you again on Monday. Go check out our Patreon. We've got some wonderful interviews there, as you know already, including a new one with Wayne Sussman, the data elections expert. Maybe our last conversation with him before the election about some crazy new data that's come out involving Mkonto Sizwe Party and the ANC. Thank you for watching. Pop us a subscribe. See you soon.